Hey everyone, welcome to another session by Simply Learn. In this session, we will learn about TypeScript generics. Generics is the ability to design a component that can work over several types rather than a single one. It is one of the critical tools in the toolkit for creating reusable components in C Sharp and Java languages. This enables users to use these components while also allowing them to utilize their kinds. Let's see what's in it for you in this session. In this session, we will first start with understanding what is TypeScript generics, followed by which we will look at why to use TypeScript generics. Proceeding further, we will understand the TypeScript generic types, generic classes, and generic constraints. But before we begin, make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and click down the bell icon so you never miss an update from Simply Learn. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. What is TypeScript generics? TypeScript generics is a tool for creating reusable components in TypeScript. Rather than working with a single data type, it builds a component that can interact with various data kinds. It enables users to consume these components while also using their own kinds. Generics ensure that the software is both adaptable and scalable over time. Type safety is provided via generics without sacrificing performance or efficiency. The type variable in TypeScript is used to denote types and uses generics. Generic functions have the same type as non-generic functions with type arguments specified first, as in function declarations. Why use TypeScript generics? Consider the below code without generics. The identity function is a function that returns whatever is sent in as a parameter. We could either provide the identity function with a specific type or identity function with any type. While the use of any is generic, when we use any, the function accepts any kind for the type of argument. As a result, when function returns, we lose information about what the type was. The only information we have is that any type could be produced if we pass in a string. We need the means to capture the argument type in such a way that we can use it to signify what is being returned as well. We will utilize a type variable here, which is a form of variable that deals with types rather than values. The identity function now has a type variable called type. This type allows us to capture the type of data the user supplies. For example, a number or a string, so that we can use it later. We are going to utilize the type as a return type once more. We can use two methods to invoke generic identity function after writing it. One method is to pass all the parameters to the function, including the type argument. The other method is to utilize type argument inference. Now let us look at the TypeScript generic types. Generic functions have the same type parameters as non-generic functions, with the type parameters listed first as in the function declarations. We can call the generic type parameter in the type by whatever name we like as long as the number of type variables and how they have utilized match. The generic type can also be written as a call signature of an object literal type. TypeScript generic classes A generic class resembles a generic interface in appearance. Following the name of class, generic classes contain a generic type parameter list enclosed in angular brackets. Although this is relatively literal use of the generic number class, you will notice that nothing restricts it to using only the number type. Instead, we may have used string or even more complicated objects. A class type has two sides, a static side and an instance side. Generic classes are only generic on the instance side, not on the static side. Hence, static members can't use the class type parameters while working with them. Although this is relatively literal use of the generic number class, you will notice that nothing restricts it to using only the number type. Instead, we may have used string or even more complicated objects. Putting the type parameter on the class itself, like the interface, ensures that all of the class's property functions with the same type. TypeScript generic constraints. 
TypeScript generic types allow you to work with any data type. We can, however, use constraints to limit it to a specific types. A type parameter can be declared that is limited by another type parameter. For instance, in this case, we would like to retrieve a property from an object based on its name. We will put a constraint between two types to ensure that we are not obtaining a property that does not exist on the object. Now let us jump into Visual Studio Code and understand TypeScript generics more better. So here we are in Visual Studio Code. The prerequisite is we need to install Node.js and we need to install TypeScript. So let's get started. Let's call a function. Function identity. Identity function is a function that returns whatever is sent in as a parameter. We could either provide the identity function with a specific type or with any type. So this is the identity function with specific type. So if we had to write the same in the identity function with the specific type. So what we'll do, we'll write it with the specific type. So to write it with any type, what we have to do is we'll write any in place of string. So while the use of any is generic, when we use any, the function accepts any kind of the type of the argument. As a result, when the function returns, we lose the information about what that type was. The only information we have is that any type could have produced if we pass in a string. So we are passing of the type string here and maybe we can pass this type as number as well instead of string. So I can make this function generic by passing the type any. But this will lose information about what type was passed. So for that we need the means to capture the argument type in such a way that we can use it to signify what is being returned as well. So we will utilize a type variable here which is of the form variable that deals with the types rather than the values. So for that we will write the code as we will create a function identity So here the identity function now has a type variable called the type. This type allows us to capture the type of data the user supplies. For example, a number or a string so that we can use it later. We are going to utilize a type as a return type once more. So we can use one of the two methods to invoke the generic identity function after writing it. So I have written a few lines of code with generic type function. So here I have written a few lines of code. In this example, the type variable t is specified with the function in the angle brackets get array. So the type variable t also is used to specify the type of the arguments and then return the value. This means that the data type which will be specified at the time of a function call will also be the data type of the arguments and of the return value. So we call generic function get array. And the pass numbers array, the strings array. For example, calling the function as get array number, and we have passed the numbers as 16 and decimal number 2.0 and 55. This will replace t with the number, and so the type of the arguments and the return value will be the number array. In the same way, for get array string, we have passed the values as hello world. The type arguments and the return value will be a string array. So now the compiler will show an error. If you try to add a string in number array or a number in string array, thus we get the type checking advantage. So it is not recommended, but we can also call a generic function without specifying the type variable. The compiler will use the inference to set the value of t on the function based on the data type of the argument values. Now let us run this code and check. So let us go to the terminal and let us first run the command typescript.cmd and the file name type.ts. Enter. Now let us run the file. 
node type dot js and here we go it's showing the number array as 1.5 to 36 and 400 we have pushed two new values one for the number array that is value 400 and for the string array hello typescript so with that we have reached the end of this video i hope you like the video thanks for watching keep learning and stay tuned to simply learn Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.